Hello and welcome to another episode of Virtual Legality. I'm your host, Richard Hogue, managing member of the Hogue Law Business Law Firm of Northville, Michigan. And yes, we have a bit of a background behind us. If you weren't on our Hangouts and Headlines episode this morning, we are celebrating a big milestone for the channel. We have just passed in subscriber base the entire capacity of the biggest college football stadium in the country. That is right. Michigan Stadium, home of my Wolverines. Go blue. I know a number of you just threw up in your mouths a little, but I love my team. What can I say? And so that's why co-counsel Mrs. Hoaglaha put up a bit of decoration behind me. Hope you don't mind. Hope it's not too distracting. But welcome to another episode where we have a topic that we very recently discussed, but in an entirely different capacity. On your screen right now is the logo for Steam. And there were a series of events that happened on Steam today, yesterday, over the past 48 hours or so that made every person with digitally quote unquote owned video games draw a little bit heavier breaths. Let's go to PC Gamer to talk about that. So eight days ago, Ubisoft says, hey, we're going to stop online support for some of our games. Not actually the biggest announcement in the world. I think everybody that's been involved in video games or technology, enterprise software, whoever's interacting with something on a subscription basis at this point in time, knows that contracts end, knows that companies decide not to support things after a time, and understand that these things don't last forever, as much as we might like it. And certainly I've had a number of conversations and a number of very, very well-meaning people want to see archival done better in video games, and I support it 100%. But we know companies don't necessarily support things as long as we would like. So it's not an announcement that we don't expect, except if we look at the second half of this headline, Ubisoft to pull online from older games, which also takes away your DLC, things get a little funky. Right? Assassin's Creed 3, lose access to your DLC. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, lose access to your DLC. Assassin's Creed Liberation, lose access to your DLC. Same for Far Cry 3. And you get the idea. PC Gamer even points out that one game is going away completely. Space Junkies, the multiplayer VR shooter, cost $40 at release and remains available for sale on Steam with no notice that it will be rendered unplayable in two months, which actually goes against Steam's policies. And we'll look at that in just a minute. Worst you still see some of these things made available for sale, right? Assassin's Creed 3, Seasons Pass, with more than five hours of new single-player gameplay. Eurogamer says the same thing about Brotherhood, an Assassin's Creed kind of offshoot sequel. The DLC includes single-player and multiplayer content. So unlike what we were talking about before, not only are these games that are defunct still on sale, not only is the DLC that will be defunct still on sale, it expressly includes single player content that because Ubisoft wired it in whatever weird way they chose to wire it for DRM or cheat protection or just to have people run through their Uplay Ubisoft accounts, I have no idea why this is happening here because they're shutting down their server support for a game that is otherwise completely single player like Assassin's Creed. People are losing access to things that they bought. And the reason I'm doing this video right now is because a number of people raised to my attention that it might be even worse than this. Now, the good news is at this point in time, spoiler alert, it turns out to not be as bad as many people thought, but that doesn't mean we can't go through the Steam Terms of Service, the Ubisoft Terms of Service, and talk about again how digital ownership is really hanging on the edge of a knife right now. So here's PC Gamer with the article from yesterday. Since the announcement, Assassin's Creed Liberation HD and Silent Hunter 5 have been pulled from sale on Steam at the request of the publisher. And they also received new notices on their Steam pages that read, please note that this title will not be accessible following September 1st, 2022, which isn't a great lead time, by the way, Ubisoft. This same notice appears on the doomed Space Junkie store page as well, while Splinter Cell Blacklist and Prince of Persia The Forgotten Sands Two other games from the list remain available for purchase with a notice that the deluxe edition and DLC for this title will not be accessible following September 1st, 2022. So two different messages. So PC Gamer is essentially going to fall on its sword here and say that they got it wrong or that it was corrected by Ubisoft. I'm not nearly as sure as the fact that Ubisoft didn't potentially change direction right here. Ubisoft had two different messages ready to go on their Steam page. One saying the deluxe edition and the DLC won't be accessible. The other saying the entire title won't be accessible. And then PC Gamer runs an article that was originally called Ubisoft's online decommissioning may render three games unplayable for people who bought them. That's since been changed. We'll look at the new title in just a minute. But 
Ubisoft had those two messages ready. And PC Gamer says, hey, that led us to believe that Assassin's Creed Liberation HD and Silent Hunter 5 were going to become totally unplayable, as one would reasonably believe. But Ubisoft now says that current owners of those games will still be able to access, play, or re-download them, implying that the notices on Steam were erroneous. In a statement issued to IGN, the company said, as stated in our support article, only DLCs and online features will be affected by the upcoming decommissioning. Current owners of those games will still be able to access, play, or re-download them. Our teams are working with our partners to update this information across all storefronts and are also assessing all available options for players who will be impacted when these games' online services are decommissioned on September 1st, 2022. It has always been our intention to do everything in our power to allow these legacy titles to remain available in the best possible conditions for players. And this is what we are working towards. It's always been their intention to do everything in our power except keep their servers on or otherwise keep their technology running to allow you to play the DLCs that you purchased with your hard-earned money. But I digress. They are correcting either the erroneous statements that never projected what they wanted to have out there as messaging to the people or correcting the decisions that they made in respect of these three particular games. Either way, their decommissioning of online services table now specifically references for things like Assassin's Creed Liberation that the installation and access to DLC will be unavailable, not the whole game. So only part of what you paid for not the whole thing. And indeed, if we go to the Steam page right now, although we see a review bomb in progress, overwhelmingly negative current reviews for Assassin's Creed Liberation, we scroll down and we can see that there is in fact an add to cart button here. And the notice now says, DLC for this product and online elements and features will become unavailable as of September 1st, 2022. The base game will continue to be playable. That is a change in notification and a change, I think, brought upon by PC Gamer and other outlets reporting. Now, if all of this sounds familiar to you, well, it should. We just did a video on this last week about how PlayStation has apparently lost the third-party rights to Studio Canal Films so badly that when that license right is lost on the first anniversary of when they shut down the PlayStation Video Store, people that purchased Studio Canal Films, at least in Germany and Austria, that's where we've seen the notice so far, will lose access to them completely. They will not be able to watch a movie that they had otherwise purchased on the PlayStation Store because, well, frankly, Sony lost the right, the legal right, to actually have them on their servers and transmit them to their customers. And I said in that video, this should put the fear of God in everyone that is interested in digital ownership and having that ownership otherwise confirmed by platform holders that may or may not be doing what is necessary on the back end through their legal contracts to make sure that you and I can still access the materials that we purchased, which also brought this article to my attention and had a number of people raise it to me saying, Rick, can they do that? <laughs> which might be a subgenre of virtual legality at this point. Can Steam, can Ubisoft actually pull a game off the service and say, no, you can no longer play it? And this is a bit of a complicated question. Steam, notably using a subscriber agreement here, terms of service, terms of use, that often gets credit both in virtual legality and with Valve and Steam fans and customers as being pro-customer give or take. And unfortunately, our readings of these things are a bit skewed by just how badly they can otherwise read, has a document here that talks a little bit about what you as a customer agree to when you enter into a relationship with Steam. So first, we point out that this definitely covers that particular relationship. As a subscriber, you may obtain access to certain services, software, and content available to subscribers or purchase certain hardware on Steam. The Steam client software and any other software content and updates you download or access via Steam, including but not limited to Valve or third-party video games and in-game content, software associated with hardware and any virtual items you trade, sell, or purchase in a Steam subscription marketplace are referred to in this agreement as content and services. Everything you buy, everything you interact with, everything you pay Valve money for, that's content and services. More importantly for this particular reading, the rights to access and or use any content and services accessible through Steam are referred to in this agreement as subscriptions. So you might think just on its face that you own something that's otherwise in your Steam library, but Steam is very careful, more careful than we saw with respect to PlayStation last week 
in not using that ownership or purchase terminology in this particular document. You're a subscriber. This is a subscription agreement. When we have content, we give you access to that content. And what is that access called? It's called a subscription, much like a magazine or maybe a streaming service. You've subscribed to that game that you spent $15 on. That's just the cost of the subscription. Why would anybody be confused on these points? Just because it says add to order and uses purchase terminology in other places and we think of it as purchases? Nonsense. Each subscription allows you to access particular content and services. Some subscriptions may impose additional terms specific to that subscription, quote unquote subscription terms. For example, an end user license agreement specific to a particular game. Keep that in mind, of course, because we're going to talk about what Ubisoft uses to protect itself and its sales of, in particular, Assassin's Creed Liberation, which we're using as an exemplar for this conversation. Then we scroll and scroll and scroll. Who can forget reading through the riveting terms and conditions of using Steam? Oh, man, I remember this section. That was a big one. You remember it, too, if you use Steam, right? No? Yeah. Nobody does. Unfortunately, this is the way the structure of these things work, and nobody can really say they read the middle of these terms of service, especially when it was put in front of them before they actually were interacting with Steam and not just otherwise enjoying the riveting content here on virtual legality. Now we get to the limitations on liability. We have some important ones. We'll see these mirrored in Ubisoft's own terms. The biggest is Steam says no guarantees which maybe is just them offering a little bit of life advice. It's fair enough. Life is short, play hard. Or maybe it's them saying that they don't guarantee a darn thing about what you think they might otherwise be promising you. To the maximum extent permitted by applicable law, which in the United States in most jurisdictions is going to be pretty darn maximum. Neither Valve nor its affiliates guarantee continuous, error-free, virus-free, or secure operation and access to Steam, the content and services, your account, and or your subscriptions or any information available in connection therewith. Breaking that down, we don't guarantee you can access what you purchased from us, period. And we have to live with that, or do we? Now, in terms of the term and license of this particular document, it commences on the date you first indicate your acceptance of these terms, presumably with a click-through in most instances, will continue in effect until otherwise terminated in accordance with this agreement. Now, here's where the steam rubber hits the road. Termination by Valve. When does Valve terminate? What can it terminate? Valve may restrict or cancel your account or any particular subscription at any time in the event that A, Valve ceases providing such subscriptions to similarly situated subscribers generally, or B, you breach the agreement. And in the event that your account or a particular subscription is restricted or terminated or canceled by Valve for a violation of the agreement or improper or illegal activity, improper doing a lot of work from a legal perspective, because improper, I mean, that could just mean Valve doesn't like you. No refund, including of any subscription fees or any unused funds in your Steam wallet, will be granted. Now, I pointed out that improper is very broad here. That's not actually what we care about. Nobody is accusing anyone that owns a copy of Assassin's Creed Liberation or Far Cry 3 of doing anything untoward. This is Ubisoft acting unilaterally to cut off access to that particular DLC. No, what we're concerned about on the Steam side, because so many people ask me, could Steam just cut off access? The answer is yes. If you look at A, Valve may restrict or cancel any particular subscription, which is, remember, how they call your ownership of a game on Steam. They call it a subscription to content and services. We may cancel your subscription in the event that we cease providing such subscriptions to similarly situated subscribers generally. Read that. It's tautological as a legal provision. We can cut you off if we decide to cut off everybody. Okay. Well, you're protected from, I guess, oppressive actions by Valve just against you individually. But if Valve decides, nah, Nobody can buy Assassin's Creed Liberation anymore. Nobody can access it if they've already purchased it. Well, we're allowed to restrict or cancel your subscription as long as we are ceasing to provide such subscriptions to similarly situated subscribers generally. We can do it as long as we decide to do it is that legal provision. So yes, Steam reserves this right very broadly. And yes, Washington or California or wherever the individual purchaser might find themselves could have an issue with this in terms of public policy. Commenters bring that up, and you're not wrong in terms of jurisdictions. And it's important to note this is the United States version of this document. It varies across the world, and different jurisdictions, especially across international lines, will have more or fewer consumer protections available to them. Consult your local council. But 
we have to take into account that when the black and white letters in a document like this establish a right like this, the overall default position of most courts in the United States is this is what Valve can do and the burden of proof on you is to show that they shouldn't be allowed to do it for public policy or other reasons. They have the starting position, the leverage and the advantage by putting a provision like this that says we can cancel your access to subscriptions whenever we decide to do it generally. And that's what's happening here, right? Now, they tell their developers a little bit something else, right? If we go in and we look at the Steamworks documentation, we see that they have some messages that they give to developers, removing a product from Steam. If you need to stop selling your product for some reason, Valve can help you make the necessary changes. Before reaching out, take a moment to carefully consider whether or not pulling your game down is actually the right choice. Are you acting based on an emotional response to negative feedback or is retiring your game the appropriate next step? I love this, right? It's like, what would your mom have to say about pulling that game down, huh? Are you reacting reasonably? Did you look at your reasonable minds can differ virtually legality sweatshirt today? Why are you pulling this game down? Maybe it makes sense, but really think about it before you contact us. Now, Ubisoft isn't regularly going to be reading this document or otherwise be persuaded by Steam talking and saying, hey, maybe you should think about this twice. They continue on in this particular procedure says, hey, just tell us. And once you contact Valve, we'll hide the purchase option and take other appropriate steps as needed. Now, the will there is actually we will. Uh, so that sounds like Valve will do what you tell them to do on this particular score. But they also admonish their particular developer partners to tell their situation to their customers, explain what's going on. And certainly Ubisoft put up a blog post eight days ago and then put up a notice in Steam. So at least not taking into account the substance of those particular materials, they were trying to communicate something to their customers. Now, I personally think what was delivered to PC Gamer, what PC Gamer reacted to on the Steam page, sounds like they had decided on a course of action that may be changed after they were called out on it. But even if we give them the benefit of the doubt, they delivered messages that were unclear to their customers. And Steam and Valve specifically say, try to be clear, <laughs> try to be transparent about these things when you take a game down because it's not good for anyone, right? When I did this video earlier, I finished off by saying effectively that PlayStation has to be worried because everyone else in the digital sales space, especially on movies, which was what at issue here, Amazon, Vudu, iTunes, anybody else, would be concerned about any party in this space essentially ruining the good gig that they got, right? They tell people they're buying things and they put in their terms of service, well, you're renting it kind of indefinitely. And if we have to cut it off, we have to cut it off. Even Steam, fan-friendly Steam has a provision that says, if we cut it off, we cut it off. That's our rights in the terms of service. And PlayStation has put that at risk. Ubisoft and Steam have put that at risk. I think we might be coming on to a specific point in time where People are going to reevaluate what this whole digital concept is, and we're either going to get more regulation or we're going to get companies that do self-certification. We're going to get something that says, hey, we promise you it's going to be up for this number of years, or we promise you that our terms of service are more transparent and better and more protected of you, and you get a year-long notice window instead of whatever this is, two months of notice window that Steam and Ubisoft are giving in this particular instance. I don't know what that looks like, but there are a lot of companies now that are falling off that knife that they've otherwise been holding fast to for a number of years. And that continues as we dive into the Ubisoft side of the equation, right? I promise this Steam page says Ubisoft's Uplay and Ubisoft account terms are going to apply. And there's a third party EULA. Now that EULA isn't terribly useful. We look at Ubisoft, it says this is a license for what they call the multimedia product. Don't you feel warm and fuzzy about they're real proud of Assassin's Creed? Now they, they did that. I have to be nice to them for just a moment. They do that so that this can be applied to multiple games. But don't you just feel like a wonderfully loved customer when you're like, yes, I purchased multimedia product. Please tell me more. And Ubisoft says, absolutely. We'd be happy to share with you the terms of service for your multimedia product, which include... This can be terminated automatically by Ubisoft without notice if the user fails to adhere to the terms and conditions of the license, which is totally fair. If somebody is in breach, we can pull the license from you. Mm, what does breach look like? Doesn't really matter for this conversation because Ubisoft is acting unilaterally, but it's pretty broad and it's entirely within Ubisoft's discretion as we see so often in these kinds of documents. More importantly for this conversation, much like Steam had its warranty limitations, well, Ubisoft has the same. Ubisoft rejects any warranty relating to the user's capacity to perform a specific use. 
Now, truthfully, in the United States, that more closely fits with we are not going to have the implied indemnification provisions of marketability or fitness for a particular purpose. It's just kind of framed differently. Ubisoft is a French company, but one could read it to apply to access. You don't need to necessarily because when we get to liability, we can put together the sentence that says, in no event can Ubisoft be held liable for any damages arising out of the inability to use the multimedia product. You can't use it? Tough. You gave us your money. We're not liable for damages. We're not liable for refunds. Now, Steam comes in and says, hey, if you two weeks out, you can get a refund for these various things. But it doesn't otherwise talk about intentional willful acts of a developer to just break their game, right? Ubisoft doesn't give a reason for not allowing you to have the single player access. They just say, well, it's expensive. We're not going to run our servers anymore. To which you could respond, great. Okay. I totally get that. If you turn off for honor or whatever, it wouldn't work without your servers. What about Assassin's Creed? Why can't I play the Washington DLC to Assassin's Creed 3 because you shut it down? Uh, what does that have to do? How do those things relate? And you could explain it to me, but even if you explain it to me and it's legitimate and you're pinging something somewhere and you don't want to fix it, it's not my fault. <laughs> it's not my problem that you decided to put these wires together in a way that is now costing you profitability 10 years after you sold the product initially. Don't do that. Figure that out in the first instance. Something like this is designed to cover accidents. Oh, somebody accidentally snipped the server connection to the internet and now you don't have access to your multimedia product. That's different than we shut it down. Buy the next one. Why are you complaining? Buy the next one, which is what Ubisoft and honestly some other game companies and other multimedia companies are doing right now. Ubisoft can be better. I know they can be better, not just with communications, but with not wiring these things in such a way that it something that shouldn't possibly need a server call, apparently is deeply embedded in their Uplay account system. Which brings us to the Ubisoft terms of use, which does apply to that Ubplay concept, right? The terms govern your use of our games, downloadable content, season passes, game software, other software products, and online and mobile services, including their online functions and other features, any updates, upgrades there too, any related websites, Ubisoft platforms, and the Uplay Plus subscription service. All of these many things are our services. And please note that our privacy policy also applies. You can create your account in these various places. And then we've put these things in these kind of nested terms documents, which make for fun clicking, but don't make for easy legal review. I'm looking at you, Ubisoft. But it doesn't matter because we're going to find ourselves in the same place that we found ourselves in looking at the Steam document. The services are supplied on an as is or as available basis. We promise nothing. We do not guarantee and make no commitment or warranty concerning, among other things, availability. Yes, we sold it to you. Yes, we took your money. But in this contract, we don't guarantee availability of the service. And again, that makes sense. This is normal software language for accidents. It's normal software language for something went wrong on the internet or our side or your side. And so we don't guarantee it because we can't. There's just too many third parties in between you and us. But when you decide to turn it off yourself, we're talking about a different bucket of liability. And here, I think Ubisoft, I think Studio Canal and PlayStation, they're really pressing on people's belief in this digital ecosystem in a way that I think is going to raise this issue and continue to raise it as these stories become more and more often as we kind of leave the original digital phase of video games and other multimedia, right? This goes back to about 10 years ago in the single player game landscape. And that's going to continue to roll forward as we see how these contracts actually played out, how the engineering that went into them and when they were making things that were embedded in the online services play out. And I don't know what's going to happen there. I'm very interested. Now, Ubisoft has been in virtual legality before because a number of people don't like this terms document, didn't like the amendments that happened there. I've already gone through whole swaths of this document, but it is worthwhile at least to point out again that Ubisoft isn't as bad as the internet had said or was fearful of. You can check out those videos on this channel, but it is also very, very aggressive against kind of the customer side of things. You will bear all costs and all risks associated with the use of the services. In addition, you will bear the whole cost of any maintenance, repair, or correction required. Did Assassin's Creed 3 blow up your PlayStation? We're sorry. That's on you. Worse, the next paragraph just doubles down the other direction. You will bear sole responsibility for any damage caused to Ubisoft. Hey, did the game that we made accidentally blow up our servers somehow? Did, were you responsible for it at all? No, doesn't matter. You sign these terms of service, you're solely responsible for any damage caused to Ubisoft. Its partners, other users of the service, or any other individual or legal entity as a result of your use of all or part of the services and or games in violation of the law 
or your obligations is stipulated in these terms, right? So just playing it might not be in trouble, but who's the judge, jury, and executioner on this particular question? Well, if you guessed it was Ubisoft, you're mostly right. You could take it to trial, but that's going to be an expensive process. Ubisoft is where the buck starts and probably stops if you're not willing to engage high-priced lawyers to fight a multinational multimedia corporation. And finally, Ubisoft may in no case be held liable for payment to you of any sum or any damages as a result of your being unable to use all or part of the services. You bought it. We've already talked about the other language that covers us, but we wanted to make it really clear, crystal clear for you. If you can't access our services, even if it was our decision, well, we're not liable to you for damages of any kind. Not your money back, not any other thing that might happen to you if you have a you know psychological breakdown because you can't play Assassin's Creed 3. If that's you, I'm very sorry about it, but it's not the normal reaction to this kind of announcement. And Ubisoft doesn't care. So now we've entered into a world where as we just went through, Steam has a pretty broad right to pull these things down if they deign to do so. Ubisoft has a pretty broad right to cut you off if they deign to do so. Steam has promised to listen to developers to take their things down if those developers ask to have them taken down. And where does that leave you and me? Well, it might just leave us in the digital Hunger Games. Certainly that's where PlayStation wants us, but not watching Hunger Games because you're not going to be able to in just a short little while. This has been Virtual Legality for today. I hope this wasn't too terrifying or awful uh, if you have a lot of your library in digital. Otherwise, if you could just support the channel at Utreon or Patreon if you like this type of content, I would really appreciate it. More resources get to us through Utreon, but I know a lot of you like the Patreon platform as well. We cannot do it without support and subscribers like you. Subscribers like... Just subscribe and tell your friends. No, subscribers just like Nord, who has been a longtime supporter of the channel. I want to give special thanks to Nord and others like him that help keep our lights on, our kids fed, and keep virtual legality and this channel working and making content for you. If you'd like to do that, please do check out those support platforms. Or if you'd just rather subscribe and tell your friends and engage with the platform on any way that you choose, upvotes, downvotes, comments, every little bit helps this channel grow. If you caught it on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. And if you listen to it as a podcast, thank you so much for listening. And I will catch you on the very next episode of Virtual Legality. Virtual Legality is a YouTube video series with audio podcast versions presented as commentary and for education and entertainment purposes only. It does not constitute legal advice and does not create an attorney-client relationship. If you have legal questions about the topics discussed, please consult your own legal counsel.